Well, we're very excited today to be here with Jerry Mendocino to talk a little bit about his career, most notably his time, as many will remember him, as a host on Polka Dot Door. So thank you so much, man, for being here today. It's Pleasure exciting. To be here. Um, who is Jerry Mendocino? Tell us about your upbringing, your family, and the things that have helped kind of shape you into the person, the actor that you are today. Oh, my goodness. That's a good first question. Um, my parents came over from Italy, the same region, uh, at the same time on the same boat, oh, wow. going different places, okay. you know, different histories. They met on the boat and they fell in love. Mm. They were going to their own different lives and, you know, my mother was going to a small town called North Bay, mm. uh, which is about 200 miles north of Toronto. Mm. Anyway, they uh, ended up getting together. Uh, we ended up living in North Bay, a great town to grow up in, mm -hmm. very small town. I uh, had a great experience, you know, growing mm -hmm. up, uh, mm -hmm. great school, high school, was able to get into the arts, you know, for or have a choice between sports and arts. And as soon as I got into tackle football, I knew for sure I wanted to get into the arts, <laughs> <laughs> the tackling bit then. <laughs> Didn't work out too well. No. Which probably at my age is good because I wouldn't, my knees would be uh, shot shot yeah. by now. And uh, so anyway, that's, uh, so I started basically in high school. I always, I always had that, uh, I, I remember my first uh, memory of it was maybe grade one or two, uh, doing the singing in the choir. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, I looked out in the audience and I saw someone looking at me and smiling hmm. and it kind of stayed with me. Right. Uh, and I guess that's one of the things that got me started was mm. just f seeing that acceptance from someone. Right. That, uh, and you know, probably the energy the attention that you, yeah. you get from yeah. Yeah. right on. So uh, that's my first memory of it and I was able to get into theater in high school and uh, graduated from drama school. and. The rest is history. What drama school did you go to? Uh, University of Windsor had okay. a th four-year uh, dramatic arts program. Okay. It was the first one in Ontario, and I think only the second in Canada. Wow. And this is going back 1969, so... Incredible. Now, you have had, we were talking off camera earlier before about some of your latest endeavors on, on, on the camera, but you've had just a, an incredible career of theater acting and doing stuff on television, uh, uh, commercial stuff as well. Uh, what have been the highlights as you look back? Hmm. Well, when I got out of uh, theater school, we basically were trained in theater. I, I didn't think much of television because there was very little television and film in Toronto. Right. It was just starting as I was getting into the business, going to Toronto. Sure. Uh, so the first thing I kind of got into, actually, was from uh, TVO or OE, OECA, OECA yeah. back then. Uh, o OECA and CBC were the two major mm -hmm. employ, uh, employers right. for actors back then. And that was my first gig, was playing, uh, I think, an immigrant from Italy coming here and the hardships of, you know, no time to stay. Going on oh, with yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was my first uh, screen gig. And would that have been for some kind of documentary or educational programming that TVO would yes, have done? Yes, it okay. was. Yeah. I, they had a series of them, and I guess I was. The and Italians I, were one of them. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and tell us a little bit about some of the other shows that people would remember you from that you've done throughout your career. Um, uh, well, I, I think. My first exposure to national television was uh, King of Kensington. Okay. I ended up doing a few of those, and one was a nice uh, uh, guest starring role. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was a great experience because we actually got to tape in front of a live audience. Yes, yeah. It was one of the few, <clears throat> the only one, I think, uh, back then, and uh, there's not too many that are done up here. In a very prominent yeah. show, too, in the 70s, like everybody knows that oh, yeah. show from the CBC. It yeah. was kind of like the, the all in the family of, of yes. Canada television, yeah. you know. Yes. Um, and now, working into the 80s, obviously, Polka Dot Dora will get there, but also tell us a little bit about uh, your show for Global that many will recognize you from. Oh, Ready or Not? Yeah. Well, that came 
after Polka Dot Door. Right. And that was, as I was, I was saying to you before, uh, the same group that was watching Polka Dot Door were the right age to watch Ready or Not. So they got, got to follow that generation That's awesome. of actors. So they're right now they're in their, basically starting their 30s to late 30s. Uh, so those are the ones that I still get recognition from. Uh, surprisingly uh, a lot from ready or not but they go as far back as polka dot doors as well wow. uh, that's a long time and they still <laughs> remember me that's that's great why did you choose um to work in children's television was it was it just the available gig at the time or did you uh you know was it did you always have an interest to do something like that well when you first graduate that's really in theater that's what your best opportunity is to work in children's theater. Really? I mean, okay. Oh yeah, that's when you come out because, you know, you're, it's a very physical and uh -huh. you're, you're relating to the kids. So they figure, you know, you're in your early twenties and, mm -hmm. and that's where the opportunity, that's what the theater is like to grab those students because, and of course they'll do anything for theater. I mean, we carry our own yeah. <laughs> props and, uh, everything else, uh, in the show, but, um, I forgot where I was leading. No, was no, that's fine. It, just how how you got an interest in doing children's stuff. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I had done some uh, children's theater mm -hmm. uh, beforehand, but I hadn't heard of Polka Dot Door. Um, I had a son that was the right age. I think I might have, you know, seen it once in a while, mm -hmm. but of course it was competing with Sesame Street as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it surpassed... Uh, Sesame Street as far as audiences oh, yeah. in Ontario, in Ontario Canada, and Canada for sure uh, so all of us I heard about my agent called me for an audition for Polka Dot Door and uh, I heard it was hosting for you know I, I think I knew about it but right. I really hadn't seen right. uh, that many and what year would that have been when you first did that first audition 79 maybe okay. 78 or late 78 or early okay. 79 i think 79 was my first uh time doing polka dot door so tell me a little bit about uh how you got hired to do polka dot door and what that audition was like and uh how that all came about i think it was in a church basement <laughs> uh, a church on young street that's torn down now okay and uh i was got in. I think the casting agent was there, and probably the producer Ted Coney Bear. Right. The casting agent would have been George Bourne. I okay. Think. Wow, it's going back. Mm. Uh, and I got there, and the only thing I remember about the audition, basically, I, I might have maybe sung a song. Right. But they wanted to see how I related to the toys, <laughs> so that right. was my audition is talking to the toys and improvising, you know, a conversation. Probably to date, probably one of the most interesting auditions you've probably done. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Would you talk to these inanimate objects for us, please? <laughs> well, I some actors that I yeah. <laughs> say the same thing, but uh, no, it was, uh, and that's the, the thing that stood out. And I guess uh, it, they saw that it felt pretty natural to me. Right. I mean, I did have a child back then so maybe that helped mm -hmm. uh, and uh, theater experience of course. Now some have you know often said that during this time at TV Ontario it was a very experimental and creative time uh, how would you have described the atmosphere of TVO and the family of people that you got to know through doing Polka Dot Door how would you describe that? Well of course when you're doing it you don't realize the sure. importance of it but uh, I got to see the creators of Polka Dot Door, uh, Ted, and uh, I guess by, when did they start, 73? 71. 71. Yeah. So, 79, they had been doing it for a few years. It's a well-oiled so machine. It was sure. a well-oiled machine yeah. so, that I was getting into. Uh, we had a studio on Queensway, so it wasn't even at OECA, right. so I really wasn't in that building at all. Gotcha. Just a rented studio, the same one all the time. Uh, you went in for the one week, uh, do your uh, episodes, and you left, and I really had no other 
connection. Inter interaction. Yeah, but of course, the people there were wonderful, and uh, uh, it was a very relaxed set. I remember right. because you know we uh, it had to be a very relaxed and creative set. Sure, but it had to move too because yep. you you were there for one week. I think you did five. Yep. Five, five episodes, episodes. One for each day of the week. Yeah. Uh, now, I seem to recall that we would rehearse the first week or a day or two. Okay. So you're talking about how you would go in and you'd rehearse for a couple of days beforehand, and then you would... That seems to be my, my recollection of it, and then we would uh, maybe uh, Thursday, Friday shoot two, and Wednesday afternoon kind of thing. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Now you had mentioned doing another show for TV Ontario, kind of a documentary or educational thing. Yes. Aside from that and Polka Dot Door, was there anything else you did for TVO? Oh yes, like I say, it was during that time, I, I think I got into, I got there around 73. Okay. And up to, and including Polka Dot Door, it, that and CBC was the main employers right. for... Do you remember the names of any other shows no, that you worked no. on? No, <laughs> I, I wish I would have. Yeah. I would have had to have gone way back in my archives. I don't even keep a record or resume. Of right. It. So um, they, they would have been educational so shows of some sort for the OECA back then? Yes, they were doing a lot yeah. of that uh, yeah. original uh, programming. So Now when you think of those who you worked with at uh, Polka Dot Door, at TVO, um, were there any personalities that made an impact on you? And if they did, how did they make that impact? Well, like I say, I wasn't. I was never in the building um, right. as such, uh, other than to go see the casting agent mm -hmm. once in a while. Joe, who was George Bourne, okay, yep, I believe. Uh, so it would be just prudent to go and say hi, how are things, and what's right. going on. And uh, Ted Coney Bear, the mm -hmm. producers and the writers of Poker Dot Door, um, Heather Conkey. Course yes, was one of them. Uh, the director, who I have no recollection of what his name was, it David Moore at the time. He was one of them. Yes, one of them, yeah. yes. Like I say, it was five years, so I don't recall if it was the same director for all five years. Or gotcha. Now tell you mentioned Ted Coney Bear. Tell us a little bit more about your memories of Ted. Um, you know, one of the uh, people that was there right from the beginning and who worked with Peggy in developing and creating mm. the show. Tell us a little bit about your memories of Ted. I just remember a wonderful gentleman, uh, mm -hmm. uh, very creative, very uh, enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it was his. It was his show, and uh, he uh, he knew what he wanted, right. uh, and uh, created an atmosphere where we could give him what he wanted. We could create. There was a lot of improvising mm -hmm. in the show, as far as especially when we were creating something or building something for the children. We. Uh, so he, he, it was his, uh, a lot of directors uh, look at production as, as a war. He was the general, so mm. uh, he was a general, but a very gentle and kind general and uh, very That's creative. Yeah. Bring us back to your first memories of being on the set. You know, what instruction was given to you and what do you, what do you recall as you kind of go through the archive of your mind, showing up to that studio, the Queen's Way and... Mm what that was like. Well, like I walk in, I see the polka dot door. Yeah. In all its glory. <laughs> and the clock. Sure. In all its glory. And uh, uh, the blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, and the toys, of course. We were introduced to the toys. And from what I understand from other actors is that the toys, even when the camera was not rolling, were to be treated with the utmost respect. Almost as if they were living people. Well, uh, yeah, well, because if, uh, if there was any damage, for sure, I mean, they'd be, they'd slow down production, <laughs> you know? No, I mean, they, they, it's a prop. Right. Uh, so it was treated, you have to treat sure. all props with respect. I mean, the to uh, never touch the clock, I mean, right. that kind of stuff, right. and opening the door. I mean, you just don't do that kind right. of stuff unless this was part of the show. And, and you treated it, the whole set with it records. could fall apart too if you, if you messed with it. <laughs> yeah, and that slow down production, so you can't have that. No, it, uh, uh, I don't recall my first day mm -hmm. because, I mean, there's so much 
going on. You know, yeah. it really keeps you occupied because it's a very intensive one week sure. to shoot yeah. and to rehearse yeah. from scratch yeah. and to memorize. Uh, and uh, so it, it was a very intense week. So very little time to really uh, uh, capture everything, right. you know, just do it. Now, when you joined the cast of the show, were you aware that it had been an adaptation of the show called Play School that was done in the BBC? Was any of that kind of back history made made aware to you? Or uh, yes, Ted was very uh, thorough. He told us the history of the show, and uh -huh. uh, I, I do seem to, to recall some pictures and things. I, okay. I don't recall seeing an original. Right. Probably because he. Right. I mean. Unless it came, unless it played here in yeah, Canada. I don't think it did. I think no. the polka dot door was the adaptation of it. Right. So, so yeah, I was aware of the history, but uh, that was it. Just kind of like a flyby. This, this was new. This was Canadian with Canadian stories uh, behind the polka dot door. A lot was uh, about Canadian. Yeah, you, uh, locations and uh, situations. That was my next question. You know, was anything uniquely about this, you know, Canadian? And that that does answer a lot of it. So there were there was Canadian content intentionally part of what you were doing. Well, we were Canadians, so we go. we gave them the Canadian, uh, you know, uh, the Canadian outlook uh, mm -hmm. as far as and uh, the stories were mm -hmm. Canadian. So it was all Canadian. It was all adapted by Ted and. Uh, it was made so that it would capture the North American market. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How many episodes did you actually work on? I know that they would hire you for weeks and you do kind of five at a time. Do you remember how many episodes you did completely? Uh, no, I, not the exact amount, but my guess, I, I was there probably five years, so okay. five, around 25. Yeah. Now they would, between those 25 and the other hosts, they would just rotate uh, the hosts, uh, so they had, you know, tons of shows. Uh, right. And, but it would repeat. Repeat and, repeat and reruns and repeat. in the morning and the evening. And that's probably why kids would recognize Oh, you so absolutely. Yeah. So, and it ran for, I see, the first one, 79. I, my guess would at least 10 years. Wow. Uh, so you would have been, uh, in, terms of, in, ten, in terms of original production, you would have been there from 79 to 84. Probably, Roughly. Probably yes. done a, a week each year. Yeah. And after, and... At the same time that I was finishing up the live show, uh, the TV show, the live show, show came in too, yeah. uh, so. to work. So, and we're gonna get, we're gonna get there in a second because I right. do want to talk about that. Um, did you ever have to wear the Pokoru costume? Oh, the the host, the male host, was the one yeah. that got into yeah. the. Uh, tell tell it us a little bit about It that. wasn't always laundered uh, after. Oh no. Show. So can, oh or, or even after you know the fifth uh, day, it 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 got pretty uh, stinky and hot. Stinky and hot. <laughs> I remember one. I I don't know if it was the TV show or the live show where they they would have a fan. We they eventually got a fan uh, on the top of the head okay. that would uh, cool the the head uh, because you were in there, and with the uh, the TV lights and everything, it got. Very hot. Wow. So you were in your undies and uh, tights, uh, and that was about it. And a t shirt just to soak up the sweat. But Wow. Yeah. And it what was, was hot it, in there? It was, was hot. It, was he pretty easy to manipulate with the gloves and everything like that? Or could you get around and dance was around it, pretty easily? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, well, you know, you had your big uh, feet and the big hands, and you were looking out. I hate to, you know, disillusion the people that are watching it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you would look out, the face would look out where the throat was, this red, so you could kind of see out right. uh, through the screen and they couldn't see. And once in a while, you'd, <laughs> with my nose, they could see a nose, you know, he had a right. big nose and it's... This is Adam's apple. It's Adam's <laughs> apple, yeah, big Adam's apple. Uh, wow. So, yeah, but it was a joke after a while. Yeah. Any uh, any mishaps with Pokeru or anything funny that <laughs> happened in any episodes that you were involved in that you can remember? Well, more with the live shows because uh, yeah. the TV show was very structured and uh, so and let's you know, yeah let's go there now. Tell me a little bit about how the whole live show concept came up, how you were contacted, uh, what it was because I know there's some folks that um, 
that maybe know that, you know, Polka Dot Door obviously was on the air at TVO, but maybe some of them not from the Toronto area don't know anything that there was a very successful live show. So give us, give us the history of the live show and how your involvement came about with that. Well, the live show was, uh, was happening for a couple of years before I got involved. Okay. Um, but I had heard from Carol Ann Francis, who was the, my first host, S. Caroline Francis. Not Caroline Reynolds? Caroline Reynolds. Reynolds, yes. Francis. Not Caroline Caroline. Reynolds. Uh, she was the first host, uh -huh. my first uh, guest host. So mm -hmm. she told me that she was, uh, she had been doing the live show and couldn't, I don't think she could do them anymore, mm -hmm. but she uh, told me about it and I contacted the producer of the show at the time, which was Gary Richardson. Right. right? And uh, he he knew me from the show, and uh, he was looking for hosts because he was doing it himself. But right. it was getting to the point it was getting popular that he couldn't do the uh, the shows anymore. It was just mm -hmm. too much work. So he concentrated on the producing and uh, hired me uh, to host uh, host the show with uh, Cindy Cook. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that would have been around 1983. Okay. And it had been, you said it had been going on for a couple of years before A couple that. of years before that. Okay. Uh, but, you know, in a smaller key, but it was just developing. And Gary, you know, he was getting the jobs. And I think in 84 was the Ontario, they were celebrating some uh, big celebration, 100 years, 150 okay. for Ontario. Uh, Ontario, Ontario, give us a place to stand. And, and so that would have been 84, and they hired us. We toured every nook and cranny of Ontario. Wow. Uh, he ended up with uh, three teams uh, at going that point, out, really? going out. Okay. There was that many gigs. And do you remember some of the other people that were involved at the stage show? Had all of them been on screen at oh, some yes. point? Oh, yes. That was the criteria. Yeah. You, you couldn't... They, you'd have to be recognized from the show. Right. And you know, do you remember some of the others that went out? You, there's you, City Cook, Carol Ann, obviously. Dennis Simpson go out? Uh, no, no. Uh, Dennis, I don't recall. He okay. might have yeah. before. Right. But during my stay, I'm trying to remember the names, but uh, uh, they're, not, uh, they're not there right now. That's all good. Well, while we're talking about co-hosts, do you, aside from Carol Ann Reynolds, do you remember any of the other co-hosts that you worked with? Well, Cindy Cook Cindy was Cook. one of the hosts. Uh, did you work with her on TV as well? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think a week or two okay. with Carol Ann, a week, uh, Tanya Williams Okay. Yeah. for a week or two, I can't recall, uh, Noreen Virgin. Noreen Vir Virgin, yes. Very cool. Uh, I think that's, I can't recall any others. Very I cool. I think that would have been it. Yeah. Were there... Uh, were there any other kind of polka dot door merchandising that they did at the time? Anything that they sold? Any dolls? Any puzzles? Anything like that? Oh yes, oh yeah. There's some. I have one here. Yeah, uh, a little I loud found this after polka dot door button. I think there was a doll, uh, a pokeroo doll. Which, okay. A small pokeroo doll, which that's the only really uh, thing I have from then. But I'm sure it's worth lots of money. Now. Very cool. Oh, and you you saved a doll yourself. I saved the doll. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I know that so they, there was. There I was know they did the record, but I'm not sure that you were involved with the record, because there was the polka dot door record. That would have been probably before yeah, me. Yeah, it was around 78. Yeah. I know Caroline had been involved with that. Yeah, but. yeah, I think it was before me. Okay. Uh, but uh, TVO had, you know, you had to go through TVO, so they had to okay everything, of course. Sure. So I guess, you know, there was limitations, but no, there was. Very cool. There was. And I'm sure you guys would take that product out on the road when you guys would be oh, doing absolutely. the stage show oh, and absolutely. sell it to the kids. Did you sense at the time that you were part of the huge cultural phenomenon? Like, it's so interesting to see that TV Ontario to this day, even though Polka Dot Door doesn't even air on the station, they still use Polka Dot, uh, the Pokeroo as a mascot. Yes, and, and so it's, it's still in demand. You exactly. can just rent 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Rent the, rent the costume and have your own pokeroo party. Yes. We should do that for some of our get togethers. That'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> I'm not getting into it. Oh, okay, okay. As long as you get into it, Tim. <laughs> I don't know, it might smell bad. <laughs> But, uh, you know, it's become such a huge cultural phenomenon and the power of nostalgia has kept the memory so fresh in, yeah, well, you know, people my thanks age. Thanks to people uh, like yourself that keep it... Uh, so how does that make you feel? Like, you not only educated millions of young Ontarians and Canadians, but, uh, you know, this is something that is stuck. Uh, you don't see it when you're doing the TV show, of course, but when I was doing the live show and saw the impact, Right, all across Canada, yeah, and the interest and uh, the kids coming to the show, and there's no better audience, boy, than kids. Uh, they'll tell you if you're uh, good or bad. Boy, yeah, they're pretty kid. honest. Oh yeah, <laughs> but what an enthusiastic audience! It was a highlight. I remember going to Mass, doing the show on, in Massey Hall with all these children. Uh, that was probably uh, you know. I said I've made it. Right, I've made it. Did you ever work with other children's entertainers at the time, cross paths with like Sharon Lois and Bram or Raffi or anything like that? Or was this kind of separate from all of that that was going on? Because I know that was kind of like a golden age of children's education. Well, they, that was, of course, CBC would maybe Mr. Yeah. Dress Up. Sure. He did go on tour with Polka Dot Door. Okay. But that was after I was not involved. Gotcha. But uh, he did, he toured as well. I, I heard he was fun to tour with, that's for sure. And do people still recognize you from Polka Dot Door? Oh, absolutely. I am amazed That's that they still recognize me. And, you know, those, like I say, ready or not, is understandable. But sure. uh, going back that far, yeah. uh, you really realize the impact. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, um, you're obviously aware that uh, TVO has not, at this point, made their archive available. So, so somewhere in some canisters on Young Street in a basement somewhere are, are these episodes that you were involved with. Uh, you know, would you like to see them see the light of day as well? Bring back Polka Dot Door! <laughs> I, it would be interesting if they brought back the old show, what kind of interest they would get. I, yeah. I, I think a certain age group... Because, you know, we competed against Sesame Street, and that was, like, fast. That was a new thing, very yeah, fast. Yeah. But there was an age group that, you know, loved that slow and... Gentle. Uh, gentle, and they knew what was coming mm -hmm. all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, it obviously was, uh, you know, caught their interest because it yeah. was so popular. And, you know, even just for posterity reasons, to preserve it for future generations, it would just be great to, you know, to say that somewhere on an archive somewhere that your material is accessible you know even for future generations in your family to say hey here's a grandpa oh, did. absolutely you i know? mean you know who wants that's our chance to live forever that's right know? exactly uh and uh yeah it's it would be wonderful i i really think it's it's a shame they don't uh, they should have it for posterity or, uh, it's amazed that they don't yeah. they have it yeah but um have you seen any of your clips in all these years of stuff that you've done? Only the, what's on the internet. Yeah, uh, which is kind of few and far between. I probably have somewhere in my archives stashed maybe some VCRs of some of the shows. But, yeah. Uh, maybe at some point I might get to it and see if it's even around or it's Very cool. still there. But uh, yeah. no, it's a shame. It, yeah. should, uh, it should see the light of day. Yeah. It really should. You're right. Jerry, thank you so much for spending oh. time with us. I appreciate it. So we wanted to preserve and celebrate your memory with Polka Dot Door. And uh, what I think is so cool is that, you know, hundreds and thousands of people will see this interview. And again, they will recognize you. And I know on the other end, they will be appreciating the fact that you are a part of their lineage and you're a part of their memory. You're a part of their education. So thank you for your contributions to educational television thank in you. Ontario. And thank, thank you for giving me this interview. Through the Polka Dot Door. <laughs> Thanks.